Harrison, and I'm a product specialist for JMP Cycles. And today we're going to show you a new product that we're carrying called KBS Tank Sealer. Uh, it comes in a kit. It's got a three-part process to it. It's basically three different chemicals. One is a cleaner uh, that you put in the tank that'll work for you know the tank that's slightly rusted inside, or you know this one here happens to be uh, pretty clean. But uh, it basically cleans the tank and inside the tank so that the other products seal it properly. Um, this can be used on older tanks, new tanks, you know, whatever you have, and and uh, works really well. So the first step uh, is to take the aqua clean. What you want to do is you want to take your tank off your bike. You want to clean it all out uh, the best you can. You want to uh, tape up all of the openings. Uh, except for one where you're going to pour the, you know, your, your chemicals in and out of and uh, you know basically that's it. Um, you uh, get it all ready to go, let it dry. Um, what we're going to do with this first process here is we're going to try to remove any varnish that's inside, uh, anything inside the tank that, uh, that we just don't want there. So uh, basically this is a one-to-one -one mixture. Um, so I took this, this AquaClean product here and I mixed it with one part of water, and that's what you get there. I used a, just an empty milk jug, and, and uh, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to pour that inside the tank. I'm going to, you know, uh, agitate it a bit, mix it around, and make sure that it, uh, it gets in all the areas of the tank, cleans off any varnish that's in there. Uh, I'm going to let it soak for a while. Uh, if you have a very bad, you know, rusted tank inside, uh, they recommend that you put something in there to help loosen up the rust. Uh, the other thing you can do is uh, let it soak for 24 hours. So um, this tank here is in really good condition. I don't think we'll need to let it soak for 24 hours, but I'll definitely leave it in there for a good 12 hours and uh, just to be sure that we got everything as clean as we can possibly get it. So uh, yeah, step one is uh, I'm going to pour this in here. And just let it soak and uh, shake it around and, and uh, let it clean the inside of the tank. Okay, it's day two of our tank sealing project. And uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go ahead and use the rust blast. Um, this is the second part in the process, uh, the second step I should say. Um, yesterday we, we went ahead and we put the aqua clean in. I let that set in the tank for... 12 hours and then uh, I cleaned the tank out really well um, just using some water and uh, you know basically just got all that chemical out of the tank. Um, now the next step is to use the rust blast and the rust blast what it does is it basically is an etching uh, chemical that will allow the sealer to seal to the tank. Um, it's also uh, you know, good if there was a lot of rust in the tank, it would help remove that rust. But we don't have that problem with this particular tank, but if you do, um, either way, you still have to put this in the tank uh, in order to get the uh, sealer to adhere to the tank. Um, so what we're going to do uh, is we're going to take this product here, we're going to make sure we got all of our holes plugged up other than the top one, and uh, we're going to pour that inside the tank. And then we're going to roll that around the tank for 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the condition of your tank. Uh, I think 30 minutes will be fine on this one. Um, and then uh, once that's prepared, uh, you know, we'll dump that material out into a bucket and then some dispose of it properly. This is, uh, it is a chemical, you don't want to, you know, put this out uh, uh, somewhere where it's going to hurt the environment. You want to uh, dispose of it properly. And uh, then uh, what we'll do from there is uh, we'll do the, the final step, which is, is sealing the tank. Um, one thing that you will notice, uh, possibly if you have a tank that has severe rust damage, uh, you might notice some pinhole uh, leaks in the tank after you use this product. Um, if you do, what you want to do is you want to let the tank dry completely, and then you're going to use a, a, like a they recommend a new metal epoxy putty to, to seal those holes up before you do the final step. So uh, you want to check and make sure you know that uh, once you once you use this product, um, 
that it's totally dry before you start doing the epoxy if you, if you have need for it. You want to check your seams because obviously that's where uh, the tanks leak uh, a lot. This particular uh, bike, this tank is off the TL1000R and they are notorious for leaking on the seam and that is the situation with this tank. So um, this product though will resolve uh, any issues so we can get it back on the road again. So what we're going to do now is just take the product here, pour it inside the tank. We'll agitate the tank, uh, just roll the product around. You want to be careful with this product and try not to splash it around. Uh, get, it, get it right in your tank there. And then roll it around in the tank for 30 minutes to an hour. Pretty much it. That's all you want to do is just kind of keep rolling it around. You do not want this product to dry in the tank. So you want to keep rolling it around, cover all the areas, but you definitely do not want it to dry inside the tank. All right, it's day three of our tank sealing project. Um, yesterday, what we did is we put in the rust blast, uh, and we let that. Uh, work in the tank there and we cleaned out the tank after uh, we, we went through and used that product. Um, cleaned it out with water and got all that chemical out of, the, out of the inside of the tank. Now the next step is to put the sealer in. Um, one of the things that's very important when we're doing this step is to make sure that the tank is completely dry. Um, if you're having trouble getting to all the areas of the tank to get all the water out of it, what you want to do, if you don't have the time to let it set, is you can uh, take an uh, exhaust hose off of a vacuum cleaner and put it inside and let it blow um, you know, air throughout the tank to try to get all the crevices uh, dry. Uh, you want to make sure though, before you do that, that you're your vacuum cleaner is not emitting any dust or anything when it's when it's you know uh, pushing out uh, exhaust. You don't want anything that's going to go in the tank. So make sure that you use a clean filter on your vacuum cleaner. Um, anyway, so looking inside the tank, everything looks good now. And this step is uh, the tank sealer. Um, this stuff here is something that we definitely don't want to get on our hands. We don't want it to dry. Uh, anywhere inside the tank. What we're going to do is, is we're going to uh, first open the can up and we're going to mix it. Uh, they, they tell you to be sure not to create any air bubbles or anything. Um, there's a silver pigment to the, to the product so what we want to do is we want to stir it kind of slowly and as we're stirring we're going to pull the uh, stick up slightly so that we're getting all of the all of the stuff out from the bottom mixed in thoroughly with the, the rest of the product so we can pour it into the tank. Uh, and as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but there's the product itself is a silver color. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to gently stir the product and as we're stirring, we're going to pull the stick upward and get it mixed up as best we can. As you can see, it's like a, it has the, uh, like a watery oil. Right now what we want to do is we want to just move that stuff around. Try to get it in all the areas of the tank, especially where there's seams or welds or 
Any single exam. So we're just going to spend some time here and work it around. And then uh, once we get that part done, we'll drain it off and let it dry. We put the sealer in the tank uh, and we got that stuff all in there. Uh, what I did uh, was I worked it around inside the tank as best I could. Uh, it is a silver color. And uh, you can see it kind of moves like molasses. So uh, what you want to do is you just move it around inside the tank to coat the entire tank. Uh, and then once that's done, uh, you want to make sure that you get the excess out of the tank. For me, that was the hardest part. Um, on this particular tank, the only place that I have an opening uh, is the bottom here, and it's a flat surface, so it's very hard to pour out of. And it's impossible to pour out of the top because the top uh, has a bevel inside. So what I ended up doing was, is I went and grabbed a, a plunger. Uh, basically, this is a plunger I use for, uh, you know, bleeding hydraulic brakes or, um, you know, hydraulic clutches. Uh, and what I did was, is I just stuck that, stood the tank up on end, and let the product cool down in the bottom after everything else was coated, and then I used the plunger to uh, basically suck up the excess and put it in the can. So, uh, worked really well, uh, made it a lot easier. Um, and, uh, you know, this is a cheap, you know, cheap plunger, cost you a couple bucks. Uh, I know that uh, Motion Pro makes them and, uh, you know, easily accessible item and, and something that uh, you might want to pick up before you do this project, especially if you have a tank like this. Um, We'll let this dry now. I basically just want to let it dry at room temperature and it's going to seal everything up. Uh, you know, if you have uh, any, you know, rust damage or anything like that inside the tank, it's going to coat all that stuff up real nice. Uh, it will coat uh, and basically fix any uh, hole that is not bigger than the head of a pin. So, uh, you know, all those uh, little uh, gaps where gas or fuel can seep out are going to be all sealed up with this product. Um, and it was fairly simple to do. The, the, the worst thing is you just have to be patient. Uh, you have to follow the directions. You have to take your time with it. Uh, but once you, uh, once you get it done and you, you do it properly, uh, you'll have a seal that'll, that'll last for sure the lifetime of the, of the tank. So, uh, you know, KBS tank sealer. Um, one simple kit, three part process, three easy steps, just follow directions, be patient, and uh, yeah, it'll save you a lot of money in the long run and uh, give you a good uh, seal that'll you know, keep your fuel from uh, leaking out. So there you have it.